This is Gary with MacMost.com. On this episode I'm going to talk about changing your email address. I get a lot of questions from people that say they're about to change their email address. What do they need to think about before doing so? So let's take a look at the process of changing from one email address to the other. So if it's time to switch email addresses here's how to do it in the most painless way. First thing you want to do is create your new email account. So say you're switching from an ISP email address which is a bad idea to use your cable or telephone providers uh, email service but you're switching to something better like iCloud or Gmail. So you create that new account, you make sure it's working, you have it all set up and you like it. Now important, don't delete your old one. There's no reason to. You can keep using it. Matter of fact it's going to be important to keep using it for a little while to make sure everything gets switched over. If you haven't had more than one email account before, you may not know this, but you can set up multiple email accounts on any Apple device. So, for instance, on your Mac you can have both your old email address and your new email address coming into your Mac Mail app and they'll both actually have a new email appear in the inbox. It's no problem. So what I do is I would have my old email account only come into, say, my desktop Mac and have all my other devices like my iPad and my iPhone, they just get email from my new email address, the one I'm moving forward with. That way I'm not bothered with dealing with uh, stuff coming into my old email account while I'm on the go, only when I'm sitting at my desk. So next you want to start the change. So you want to think of the obvious people, the people you actually email with on a daily or weekly basis. Let them know, send them an email and tell them you have a new email address and what it is. Make sure you send that from your new email address. Matter of fact, you should probably never send anything from your old email address unless you need to do that to confirm something while changing an account. Um, so get these obvious people onto your new email account so you're on your way. Then after that you want to think about online accounts because of course email addresses aren't just email addresses anymore. They're IDs for all these important accounts. So think of all the most important accounts, the ones that obviously come to mind, uh, like the ones listed here, and uh, start to go through those websites and update them in settings and the profile. It's different for every website where you could go and update your email address. If you can't find it then look at the support section, uh, look at the help section, uh, even search Google for the name of the service and how to change my ID or something like that um, and get the important ones out of the way. Now to go beyond the important ones you may want to consult your password manager like if you use 1Password or LastPass or if you don't use any of those look in Keychain Access or uh, even easier just the Preferences section in Safari uh, under Passwords and just see what's listed there and this should trigger your memory as to what other accounts you use. Now it's going to be a lot in the list. Don't get overwhelmed. The first time you go through it just look for the major ones, the ones that are really important to you and change those. Then come back later, maybe the next day or next week and look at the minor ones and go and change those. You never have to get it exactly right because of how we're going to deal with things that we missed later on. So newsletter subscriptions are a little different because a lot of times you don't have an account that you can log on to. For instance with the MacMost newsletter you would go to the bottom of the last one that you got and there you would see an unsubscribe link. Sometimes newsletters have a little change my email address link but a lot of times it's just an unsubscribe link. Unsubscribe and then go back to the website like you were somebody who is newly signing up for the service and subscribe with your new email address. It's as simple as that. Now for Finishing everything off, what you need to do is monitor your old email account. So you're still getting it on, say, your desktop, and you want to go and check that maybe every day for a while, and then after a while, it'll only be every week, and then maybe even just to monthly, and see what comes in there. If you get an email from a friend, make sure they know you have a new email address. If you get an email from a, a service that you use, log on to that website and change it. Eventually you'll stop getting email altogether or at least email that's important to you. Now one tip I've got is don't reply when you get something to your old email address because you're replying from your old email account and you just don't want to send email from there. Instead forward it to your new email account and reply from there. Or 
reply, but then make sure you change which account it's coming from, which you can do in Mail on Mac. So just make sure that anytime you're sending an email, it's coming from your new email address instead of the old one. This will avoid confusion. Say if somebody gets something that says, I've got a new email address, but it's coming from the old one, they might not know which one's new and which one's old. It may not be as obvious to them as it is to you. So the two other functions that you may see with your old email account that you may te be tempted to use. One is forwarding. If you look in your old email account under settings maybe uh, on the web interface for your ISP, there may be a way to simply forward all your email from your old account to your new one. This is a bad idea for a number of reasons. Well, first of all, think about it. If you're getting a lot of spam at your old email account, do you want all that spam forwarded to your new one? Probably not. So you don't want to have forwarding turned on for that reason alone. But also, uh, it will mask if an account is uh, using your old email address. So say you are using your cable modem provider's email uh, account as your old one and you have something important like a bank account that's using that as an ID. All your emails forwarded so you don't even notice that it's going to the old account. Then you move, you lose that uh, email address and now you no longer have access to that bank without some difficulty. So forget about forwarding. Just continue to monitor that old account until you're not getting anything to that old account except spam. Likewise, autoresponders the same way. You can set your old email account perhaps to automatically respond to uh, email and tell people, hey, uh, I have a new email address. But do you really want spammers getting those autoresponders? Probably not. So uh, it's best just to continue to monitor that rather than having the autoresponders set. It's also misleading because a, a corporation like a company that you have an account with, they may get those autoresponders, but there's not going to be a human on the other end to actually read it and change your email account for you. You're going to have to do it. So it really doesn't do very much good. So stop with the forwarding and autoresponders and just pay attention to that old email account for a while until you're sure that everything's been switched over.